My name is uh, Dr David Bogod and I'm here in the Association of Anaesthetists of Great Britain and Ireland talking to Les Gemmell. Les Gemmell is a consultant anaesthetist, is the Associate Medical Director of the North Wales Trust uh, and is the chair of the working party of the association which has been considering the question of do not attempt resuscitation orders in the perioperative period. Uh, Les, can you explain what a, a do not attempt resuscitation order is? Well, as it says, you know, basically these are orders that are placed on patients who are at the end of a probably a, maybe a cancer treatment that when futility has just been decided. The resuscitation could be consist of cardiopulmonary resuscitation, which would be uh, cardiac massage and uh, uh, mechanical ventilation, and plus or minus giving a drug such as vasoactive drugs, etc. Other treatments such as pain relief, fluids, uh, treatment for um, the ongoing um, uh, cancer maybe, all those will be continued. But in the event of a cardiac event, then the resuscitation orders would not be carried out. And uh, it's an important part of palliative care that the patients understand that this process is going and that the actual result of an attempt to resuscitate them would be almost futile. But essentially these uh, orders are, are discussed with the patient, in fact the, presumably the patient is, uh, is greatly involved in whether uh, uh, what you've described as a DNAR order is, uh, is brought, uh, brought to bear. Yeah, w with the increasing autonomy of patients this is absolutely the right way forward. Patients and their carers, if they wish them to be involved, must be involved with this decision making process. If they have the competence to understand and retain the information about what we are trying to introduce in their, in what a lot of the patients will be in a palliative care pathway. So essentially what these orders are about, to simplify matters obviously, is, is if my heart stops I don't want somebody to try to restart it, if I stop breathing I don't want somebody to, to breathe on my behalf and, and from what you're saying if my blood pressure starts to fall dramatically because I'm on the point of death I don't want artificial methods to keep the blood pressure up. So exactly because at that point any attempts would be futile. So as I understand it uh, Les, the reason anaesthetists are concerned about this is that the process of anaesthesia as such uh, imposes some of these, uh, these processes like stopping breathing which would then trigger the DNAR order, so that if you were obeying the decision to the letter, once you'd given the drugs for an anaesthetic that stopped the patient breathing, you would then have to stand back and not resuscitate them. Succinctly put, the very process of anaesthesia, as we all know, can drop blood pressure, can slow the heart rate, can actually stop breathing. All those procedures to reverse those very things could be regarded as a resuscitative measure and that's why patients need to be informed that to carry out this procedure then the very nature of their DNAR order which was placed on them in a different circumstance may have to be breached in order to carry out this anaesthetic. But is there any reason why you would want to give an anaesthetic or to operate on somebody who is near death? I think the number of these patients are increasing. Uh, the quality of palliative care and the, the, uh, the service that they provide is in, uh, 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 improving time on time in, in, in the UK. And you think of these patients that are coming through that might require something to, to add, enhance the quality of life. There may be a feeding tube which might need to be placed which might be under the general anaesthetic and that is the basic quality of life. There may be uh, a process which is adding to the distress of the patients which can easily be rectified. I'll give you an example of a bowel obstruction due to extra mechanical pressure. There may then be something which is totally uh, untoward of the, of the actual uh, disease process, such as an appendicitis, which can be quickly rectified. And then there may be analgesic type operations, maybe a fracture through a metastasis, which the quickest way to get analgesia may be the to, to fix that particular fracture. Um, I understand that from what you say, DNAR orders usually apply to patients with perhaps a terminal disease or who are coming to the end of their natural lives, uh, but I'm aware that there are some cases where fit, healthy young patients express great concerns about resuscitation before undergoing fairly routine operative procedures uh, and a concern perhaps that if something goes seriously wrong with the anaesthetic they'll be resuscitated and end up in a in a very poor state afterwards and, and often uh, express the view they'd rather not be resuscitated. Does your guidance offer any help that, uh, to this kind of patient or this kind of situation? 
indirectly, the, we concentrated on those patients you said right at the beginning who were probably suffering from cancer at the end of some uh, futile treatment process who required an operation. But having said that, this type of situation that you describe in the young healthy person will be extremely difficult. But you know the guidance is there that may be helpful for Denise to to take them through this process. For example, anaesthesia is very safe. We have the evidence for that. Yes, incidents can occur, but we can cr quickly collected by anaesthetist. We quote in the article, you know, that the death rate phrase from uh, a cardiorespiratory incident to the ward would be something, the survival rate would be less than 50%. And it's been shown that if such an incident would occur in anaesthesia, a 92% survival rate. So I think it's important that, and it may take a long time, that you convince this uh, young pa fit patient that, yes, incidents do occur, they're very rare. They're very rare that the end toward events occur after them and that the risk that the actual uh, resuscitative process is very very successful and hopefully after a long time you may convince this patient that yes she wants the resuscitative process because again adhering to the actual words that we're talking about if you were that anesthetizing that young lady then perhaps you wouldn't under, under her understanding of it, not be able to give her atropine, for instance, for a bradycardia, you know, very common after lapars laparoscopically. Mm -hmm. Or you might not be able to give fluids if a blood pressure would drop. You might have given increased oxygen if an oxygen do man. So you're talking about examples where the, the heart would slow down or stop exactly. just as uh, briefly yeah. during the operation. So, so uh, Les, could you just um, briefly take us through uh, a summary of your guidance as laid out in this uh, AAGBI safety guideline? The recommendations that we've provided for our members uh, start with that this is essential that patients with DNA orders who are going through a, a, the, a surgical a, a, a procedure must be referred to the anaesthetic department and the surgical teams very early in their course. Then patients, carers if they wish, and proxy decision makers if they're involved, must be involved with a discussion with the surgical team and the anaesthetist involved to discuss the DNA order itself and what that means and what their understanding of it is, the procedure, whether it's relative, whether it should be done, and then what options that are available for the anaesthetist to undertake this operation. And those options are that the DNA order is uh, removed completely, that there is a modified DNAR procedure in which the, there is allowed oxygen to be delivered, maybe uh, atropine to speed up the heart rate, a cannula can be put in, and some fluid resuscitation if there's a drop in blood pressure. This is, uh, we provide a performer for that, and that can be used uh, as, as a documentation for the procedures that the patient has agreed to. And the last one of all is that the DNAR order should be not changed at all and that it should be in place throughout the period. This one would be the most difficult for an anaesthetist to accept because we all understand that by the very nature of the anaesthetic drugs we use, then there will be very often times that we must use some of the drugs which could be regarded as resuscitative drugs. The next very important issue is that of the communication and documentation of this particular exercise. The communication must be throughout the, uh, the, 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 the patient's pathway, that must start in the ward, it must continue to theatre, the theatre teams are dealing with it, the recovery teams, and then at handover time back to the patient's uh, ward, that's when uh, the communication of the DNA order should be reinstated. Documentation is important, and that's uh, documentation in the patient notes of the detail of what has been discussed. I've mentioned that there should be a, both a time and loco location sensitive nature to the DNA management order. The timing is, as we've alluded to, maybe at the start of the operation when the patient arrives in theatre and stopping at the time when the handover occurs between the recovery staff and the ward, patient, uh, the ward staff. That may, in certain circumstances, be extended very rarely, such if we've put an epidural in, you might want to be able to give um, blood pressure elevating drugs. The, um, the, the location sensitive is, as we said, it's in, in theatres, start of the time in theatre and end of recovery. Thank you, Les Gemmel, for chairing this working party on behalf of the Association of Anaesthetists of Great Britain and Ireland. Uh, and thank you for coming here to 21 Portland Place to discuss it with me. Thank you very much for asking me. Uh, the Association of Anaesthetists has already made this guidance available to all its members, uh, but they've also released it onto their website for general access 
when they can be found at www.aagbi.org. <laughs>